Hello and welcome to the My Heritage Webinars series. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, your host, broadcasting to you live from Webinar Headquarters in Middleton, Idaho. Today we have Daniel Horowitz, who is with us live at My Heritage Headquarters in uh, in Israel for his class using My Heritage tools to improve your family data. So thanks to Daniel and thanks to all of you for registering for today's live webinar. It's been fun to see your weather reports here in the chat area. Uh, it's uh, it seems to be snowy and everywhere except for Australia and uh, and Israel. So wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you all with us. And breaking news, uh, this was announced just yesterday uh, uh, throughout the globe. Uh, My Heritage Live 2019 will take place in Amsterdam, September 6th through the. 8th of this year. Registration is now open at live2019.myheritage.com. My Heritage Live 2018 in Oslo was so successful and one of the most unique conferences I've ever attended. So if you've ever wanted to visit the Netherlands, this is a really good opportunity. And another good opportunity is to hear today from Daniel Horowitz. Daniel is a genealogy expert at MyHeritage, providing key contributions, liaising with genealogy societies, bloggers, and media, as well as lecturing and attending conferences uh, around the world. Dedicated to genealogy since 1986, he was the teacher and the study guide editor of the Family History Project Searching for My Roots in Venezuela for 15 years. Daniel is involved in several crowdsourced digitization and transcription projects and holds a board-level position at the Israel Genealogy Research Association. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give Daniel Horowitz a nice warm webinar welcome. Uh, Daniel, how are you and welcome to the show. Very good, Jeff. Thank you very much. You know, well, that, all that introduction, it will seem almost uh, that I don't sleep. Uh, but right. yes, I do sleep also. <laughs> uh, but I'm good. I'm good. Right now I'm not sleeping. It's uh, only, uh, what, <laughs> 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock here in Israel. And ready to bring all of you the My Heritage tools that you can use to improve your family tree data. Well, Daniel, it's all yours. Looking forward to it. Okay, so uh, let's start uh, right away, and uh, let me present you with the agenda. Right, I would like to focus on four main features that My Heritage offers: the matches. Uh, the pedigree map, which we already uh, presented previously as a webinar, but today I'm going to give uh, a different focus uh, on it. The consistency checker, which is the tool that my heritage has in order to uh, make sure all your research is correct and well done. And the charts and books that could also be used to uh, assure that your research is uh, as it should. I'm going to start from the homepage of my heritage, and this is probably for some of you uh, a little bit of uh, first time to see the website that we are going to be extended to all our users, the new design. And I'm also very excited because this presentation also has uh, the new language or the new design that my heritage is going to use from now on, not only for the website, but for all the features. <clears throat> and I'm going to start with the family tree. And, and Jeff, I'm pretty sure that, like me, you have a very extensive family tree uh, on my heritage, uh, of course, and very important for everybody oh, yeah. uh, to have it there. Uh, but the question is, Jeff, how certain you are that all your facts and all your information in the family tree is accurate and correct? Hmm. Well, that's a really good question. I, I'd like to think that the the research that I personally do is pretty good. I I know I inherited uh, lots of information from uh, on on a couple of my lines, you know, from from grandma and from aunts a long time ago. So I, I'm not so sure about all of it. Well, and, and that is actually the reality for all of us. Uh, no matter how long we have been doing this, uh, in my own case, we're talking about more, more than 30 years. I also have inherited a lot of information. I have put manually a lot of information as well, and not necessarily all the information that I type in may be correct. Yeah. So 
in this view of, of the family tree, let's, let's talk first about how to improve the amount of information that we have in our tree. And I do know that for some people, we have those brick walls that is really more than a brick in the wall. It looks like a huge wall with a lot of bricks. And my heritage has the matches uh, ready to help you get more information. Now, the, mat the matches are two types of matches. There are the smart matches, which are individuals that appear in another family tree. And I'm not going to talk about them today because based on other family trees may not be accurate because, of course, I will need to inquire uh, about the other person's sources and proper citations, etc. You will also see, Mark, on your screen uh, some purple icons for some of the people, including myself and my mother. And, and those only says that we have performed DNA tests. But the ones that I'm going to focus now is the brown one, which symbolize all the individuals that caught a record match. And let me refresh uh, to all of you what a record match is. It's simply that individual appearing in one of the 9.5, a little bit more than 9.5 billions of historical records that my heritage has for you. Once you click on one of those uh, icons, or you can go under the discovery menu, also on the records, I like to see the record matches by source. I see it uh, better organized uh, in that way. I go by collections and I may of course found more than one individual per collection, but still it's easier for me uh, to go and take care of all the people either in the marriage uh, collection, on the obituaries. Uh, we have a very nice collection of yearbooks and many, many more records coming on the pipeline. So this uh, 9.5 is just a temporary number that will be increased now any day and continuously uh, as that is one of the goals of my heritage. One of the collections I love is the 1940 census because this is actually one of the very first census where people still alive could find themselves and even better because in that census, they also ask people about the 1935. So it's like having two census in one. <clears throat> so I, I see that I have here five matches. I'm gonna go in uh, and review it. Uh, I see that the first match is uh, for a cousin of mine, a Jacob Singer, and he appears in the 1940 census. I have a lot of information about him, but it seems that I don't have his residence. You can see how my heritage is telling me over there that the new information that this match is going to provide me is the residence. I see the birth, I see the wife, I see the daughter, and that is what's going to reconfirm that this is really my cousin. So I can go one step further and I can review more in detail this match and see all the information that the record has for me. Now, I would like to clarify regarding paying and free features. Up till here, if you have a basic account, if you have a free account on MyHeritage, you will get up to here with no problem. If you would like to go further and then review and accept the match, you will need to have a premium, uh, actually a data plan, uh, a paid subscription for uh, my heritage. A complete will also give you access uh, to the record collection. So if I have this data plan or this complete plan, I will be able to go one step further to see all the information extracted from the record. You can see how the residence, actually the residence in 1935 is the one that it's uh, new for me uh, because probably I already had it, him in that residence for the 1940, but I wasn't aware that this was his address since 1935. 
I'm going to scroll a little bit further down. I want to know more information about this page. I even want to see the image of the record because as good genealogists, I don't believe any transcription. Uh, I like to see the records with my very own eyes. So once I have confirmed that this is a record, that this is actually information, good information that I want to put on my family tree, I'm going to confirm the match. And, and this is a question I have been getting uh, more and more on my presentations, that people are not sure what you should do with those matches. So the first step is definitely to confirm those matches. And you could stop right over there and just confirm and say, hey, you know, my heritage, you are right. This is the person. And that's it. But my heritage will encourage you and I will suggest you to go one step further than confirming and also extracting the information into your tree. After all, we're here all today to improve our data on our tree. So my heritage will provide me uh, with a side by side screen. In the left side is my information coming from my tree. In the right side is the information found on the record. I will be able to compare exactly uh, each one of the facts or the pieces of information. I will scroll down <clears throat> and I will find uh, little arrows next to those facts. And that will allow me to pick and choose the pieces of information that I want to add to my tree. Sometimes you may not want to add everything. You may want to add only particular details and that's fine. It's, it's all uh, your tree and you decide what to place over there. If you want to do all the details at once, you have that double arrow on the bottom uh, or simply the button that says extract, extract all information and everything will be copied to your tree with a proper source citation. So you will know that these details were extracted from the 1940 census, including the page, uh, the line, and all the information, the URL also uh, of the record. And nothing, but absolutely nothing is gonna change on your tree until you click that orange button at the bottom that said, that says save to tree. So you could press as many arrows as you want. You last step has to be save to tree. So now I can go back to my tree. I will see more information added over there. And that new information is going to trigger more matches, both smart matches and record matches. And, and this is a process that it's constantly running uh, on our servers and the reason why most of these people uh, don't sleep at night and spend all these long nights accepting and extracting information from the record matches. Now let's go uh, under family tree to the second feature I would like to uh, present you and also let me give you a tip here uh, I see a lot of people just clicking on the family tree and, and they see this menu and they click again the family tree and the menu disappears and keep reloading the page. The trick to do what I did is simply to put the mouse over family tree and no clicking. This is what's bringing this menu or every menu on my heritage. Then I'm going to slowly move to more and I'm gonna click on more to discover that I have more features hidden right there. So the first one that I would like to talk right now is the pedigree map. As I said, uh, this is a feature already long time release on my heritage. It's very nice because it will show me the places in the world where my facts happen. Now, which facts? Well, that is for you to decide. On the upper right corner, you have a filter icon. And by clicking over there, you can see what we have selected as a default. 
the default will be up to 10 generations, up and down, uh, birth, death, photos, and other facts that has, uh, have a place as part of the fact. Uh, and any fact going from 1624 to actually 2019 till today. This will help you filter uh, and select the periods and the facts and the places that you are more interested on. Now, on the left side, you will see that I can choose which individuals I want to be analyzed. Uh, I may want my extended family, my immediate family, ancestors, descendants, only one person, and not necessarily only me, or uh, it, it's not all about me actually, because where you see your name, you could start typing any name from your family tree, uh, and my heritage will detect and will bring you those individuals and you can select an individual and build the pedigree map for that individual or his family uh, on, uh, on this map. Now, a very big secret here for all of you that have uh, a big tree and you want the, uh, the individuals, all the individuals in the tree to be plotted on this map, is to, after you came here, just click right where it says pedigree map, and my heritage will take in account all the individuals in the family tree. Right now, by default, we will only take the extended family as you can see right here. So I use this map for a few purposes. The first one is whenever I need to travel and and Scott, I do that a lot. Conferences, family around the world. I come here and I see uh, in the place where I am going to travel, what events happen on a particular country. In this case, let me choose Romania, where are from where the place where my ancestors are coming. And I will know how to plan my trip. And I will know uh, which cities or which places I would like to visit. I, of course, will not necessarily take my computer with me. So now on the uh, right side, I would be able to see a list of all the cities that I have used. Uh, and this I will use in order to detect any uh, misspells or any typos on the different names. But more important at this stage is the fact that I can print this list on, uh, on a PDF, uh, create a PDF and print it, and then just uh, take it with me whenever and wherever I go. Hey, Daniel, right away we've got uh, some people asking about the little symbols in the, in the left panel over there uh, that are kind of um, next to some of the places. Can you tell us a little bit about those oh. symbols on the, in yeah, the left sure. side? Uh, I'm pretty sure you're referring to this one. Yeah. Yes, and that is a warning uh, icon uh, that my heritage is displaying because something is, is happening with that address. Uh, so let me click over there and you will see that my heritage tried to pinpoint that location on the map. And uh, we couldn't find the specific address in this case. This is a street in uh, a city in Romania. And my heritage is providing me actually with 14 different possibilities. And the amount of possibilities will depend on the country and whatever Google map uh, has for you. So I can simply check one of those uh, marks uh, on the right. My heritage will ask me if I really want to change not only one fact, but all the facts related to that specific location that for some reason we couldn't find. And, and if this is the correct one, I will be able to correct that across my whole tree with one click. Now, I am not a fan of massive changes with one click. So I would prefer just to use the little pencil that you have below that on each of the uh, events and then you can very easily uh, mark the place uh, that you have right here. And if, if 
I will put the mouse over. I will see different suggestions based on places that I have used in the past, or I can simply write whatever information is. Now, the first fact is a birth. And, and you could see that we have identified the exact place as a location, uh, but in the second one is an address. Uh, so I would be able to write here more uh, detail, the different pieces of information that compose that address for that individual on that fact. Uh, now there is another uh, symbol on the name of, uh, of the cities. And in this case, in Bucharest, you can see that I have three red dots and, and red is already danger. Let's see, let me click over there and see exactly what's happening over there. Uh, when some of my families are actually from Bucharest, but for some reason, either I type it or I imported and inherited uh, wrong or, or a typo. Uh, on that address because Bucharest, at least in English, uh, is spelled with an H uh, in the middle. So you can see on the right side, I have three events in the uh, correct spell Bucharest and two more with the typo. So again, I can click on uh, the name. I can change the name both. The one that I already have, if maybe I want the spell uh, in Spanish because I have my uh, family tree in Spanish and I would like to take out the H over there. And again, this will take uh, the change for all the events. Or I can go to the two ones that are written incorrectly and just change it from here. So I don't need to go into all of the uh, events in my family tree to uh, improve the locations that I have here. Okay, uh, good. That answered these questions here, Daniel. What about what? What happens with countries that don't exist anymore? That's another question coming in. Oh, I I love this because uh, like the joke in my family is uh, that my grandmother had seven siblings. Uh, some of them Hungarian, some of them Romanian, a few Ukrainian, but they were all born in the same house. Like the border <laughs> moved. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, not only that, they, they move so much that the country simply disappeared. Uh, one of the preferred, my preferred examples, and, and I actually like to tease my son and ask him to find Yugoslavia on the map, on Google <laughs> map, because, you know, kids today, they only use Google maps, right? Yeah. Uh, so, well, yes, Yugoslavia is not uh, located in a current map, and, and all the events and all the places are plotted on a current Google map. Uh, and this is also something that a lot of people are asking me constantly every, every time I give a lecture. Like, what country do you use to write an event? So I would like to keep somehow that the events happened actually in Yugoslavia or uh, on our any other country or any other city probably that doesn't exist anymore. But if I want my events to be pointed in, in this map, I will need to use current locations. One of the uh, ways I have found uh, very useful to keep both is to use the place, like the current place where today, if I would like to go to the archive and find the information, I will need to know exactly the name of the city today but on the notes or on the description, uh, I normally write this was this country, Romania or Yugoslavia or, or Serbia, whatever, uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, in the time that that happened. Now, if you see on the bottom part uh, of the screen where the list ends, and this list is sorted uh, by the amount of events uh, occurring in each country, uh, I have over there um, an example of Yugoslavia, which could not be found, but also other locations that could not be found in the map, uh, like the Bukovina Austro Hungarian Empire. Uh, last time I checked, uh, they are not uh, active anymore. But still, I, I have a few events that I have kept uh, as the Austro Hungarian Empire or uh, 
the Bukovina area in, uh, in Europe. Now, the very last um, option are timeout, because again, we're basing all this uh, on a virtual map, and sometimes servers uh, get tired of asking the other servers for information. And most of the times I find that those timeouts are really either very specific locations, like I, I like to put like the number and the street and, and the city, the county. And, and you know, I, I, sometimes I go to certain resolutions that the map cannot handle or simply uh, places that doesn't exist anymore or are not able to locate it uh, in Google Maps. And, and still they have over there. For example, they have a lot of them which are burial uh, places. And I like to put like the area, the row, uh, the, the column and the number of the tombstone. And, and for Google, it's impossible to, uh, to go into that resolution. So let me go back to the family tree menu and again into the more because the next tool that I would like to show you is the check consistency. And Jeff, uh, I would love to know, have you ever tried this and uh, how many errors do you have in your tree? Oh, Daniel, I think sometimes it's easier just not to know, but uh, I did, <laughs> I did check it, uh, check it out. It found, uh, I don't know that I want to tell you exactly how many it found, but uh, yeah, it found quite a few well, in there. Well, what, a lot, a few? Well, uh, more than I would want to admit. <laughs> more than you want to recognize. Well, don't feel bad. Uh, not you or any other person uh, should feel bad uh, because a lot of uh, all of them, again, are are mistakes that we uh, we did or, or we typed over there uh, not knowing or not realizing uh, that that was a mistake. So the first thing you need to check uh, is that the consistency report is accurate or it's up to date because we don't run this constantly. We run this every once in a while. And sometimes if you are working on your genealogy, the report will not be updated. So you can see just simply click on recalculate that report and in a few uh, seconds or minutes, depending how many people, how many facts you have over there, uh, you will be able to uh, see all the mistakes. And I did actually had 71 the first time. And then when I reloaded, I have a little bit more. And I can already tell you that uh, besides uh, Judy Russell, my dearest friend, and one other person, I have not met a lot of people with, with no, with zero <laughs> inconsistencies on their tree. Now, if you see on the upper right corner, I have the arrow that will allow me also to refresh this report at any point in time. Uh, I also have a printer icon that will generate this report again in a PDF way that I can print or just simply save it on my computer in a digital way. Uh, but probably the more important feature here is the wheel, the setting wheel over there that will allow me to see all, uh, you know what, I'm not going to uh, tell you how many, I'm going to ask everybody to help me count how many errors, how many warnings and notes my heritage alerts you about. Uh, we consider that if you have a birth after the death or the child is older than the parent or the child was born after the death of a parent, you definitely have a mistake on the tree. Now, the only exception I can think about a child born after the death of the parents is and sometimes happen if the, par if the father died uh, in the nine month after the conception and until the birth, but most of the times it's simply we didn't check and we just wrote a date without checking the rest of the facts. Now we also have a set of warnings. Uh, people can die too old and that is for you to decide. The uh, default of my heritage is 110, 
But you know what? Sometimes you do have this one record Guinness in your family tree that got to 120, 115. So that will not be uh, a person uh, that you would like uh, to, uh, to take, uh, to change the date just because the report says that it's a mistake. Uh, but if, if it's alive and too old, also uh, more than 110 years, that is at least suspicious. The parents are too young to have children. And again, in my tree, I have some parents at the age of 17 and 18. So I actually moved this manually to 16. Let me keep going down. Uh, parents too old, uh, same thing. I moved this, uh, I think, a little bit better, a, a little bit upper. Uh, I think it was, uh, or, or the default is 64, and I had to move it to 74, something like that. You know, miracles from the old people. Uh, fact occurring after the death, uh, unless it's a burial, and we do have to take that in consideration. Uh, fact occurring before the birth. Uh, that's also a little bit suspicious and different, uh, difficult. Siblings with close age. And in fact, I had for many time, many years, uh, my sibling grandfather with some months in uh, difference between one and the other. That I think it's biologically impossible, but I had to rely on paperwork and that was what the paperwork says. Uh, large spouse age difference, married too young, die too young to be a spouse or alive, but too young to be a spouse, all that could be configured as you would prefer to have it. Multiple marriage of the same couple, that can happen. We will talk about it in a minute. Married name, enter as a maiden name. It's a very common mistake. Prefix, either in the first or the last name, suffix, either in the first or the last names, years with two digits. Sometimes we are uh, a little bit uh, um, like, uh, um, oh, uh, well, not careful enough. Uh, and we just type the two, the last two digits, and we expect uh, the program to fill the whole information. Uh, places of names uh, that are resemble a date. Sometimes we put, or somebody else put the date uh, instead of a place. Multiple birth facts for a person, multiple death facts for a person. Two of the errors that I have on check is tagged in photo before birth or after death. And this could happen, especially the after death. Like if I would be tagging somebody in a, in a photo uh, and the photo has, for example, the time where I scan it, and I scanned it like three, five, ten years after the person was dead, and, and my heritage know that date, I will get warnings regarding this. So I, I decided to ignore those. But incorrect use of uppercase and lowercase. And I do know my heritage do recognize that some people want to use the uppercase for last names and the lowercase uh, for the uh, first names. But sometimes we simply don't realize that we have the caps lock key uh, on when we type the name, okay? Dates in the future, unless your relative uh, is Timothy McFly, I don't think you should have any fact uh, with a <laughs> post than today. That date. was good, Daniel. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're laughing, but you, you will be surprised how many people have... How many people, yeah, people have individuals uh, died in 2029? Uh, either they have a crystal ball or, again, Timothy might fly yes. family. Yes. Uh, disconnected from the tree. Oh, you have no idea. Sometimes I disconnect different individuals and they're floating around and I don't know exactly where or who they are because I, there's no way to get into them if I'm not searching for them specifically. So this wording is actually very useful. Uh, death date resembles cause of death, also a place as a cause of death. Uh, siblings with the same first name. Uh, again, very few cases I know a parent will put the same first name for two brothers. Mostly, some of most of the cases we just added a person two times 
and we duplicated that brother uh, or, or that uh, sibling. Uh, same sex gender, well, this is not an error anymore. This is just a notice. Uh, sometimes you want to be uh, warned about it, but again, you can unselect that one and nobody will uh, notify you and nobody will uh, judge. My heritage does support uh, same gender, uh, same sex spouses. Double spaces in the name. Children with different last names. You know, I on purpose unchecked this one because uh, especially for Eastern European families, brothers have different last names. One of the reasons, let me tip you here on the genealogy of uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, the first kid were never, uh, was never recruited to go to the war and to the army. So the first kid was in the name of the mother the second one was the name of the father, and the third one had the last name of the um, neighbor that never had kids. So that way they all uh, escape uh, army. Uh, and also uh, in order to do that, the marriage of the parents were not recognized by the time the first kid was born, so they had to uh, put the name of the mother. Uh, let's move uh, on. Siblings with the same first name, same sex. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, inconsistency of last name spelling, inconsistency on place spelling. Those are another two. And is anybody counting? Uh, can anybody give me the number we have of different inconsistencies here? Uh, no, I don't. Don't have any of those uh, in here yet. Well, let me save it there. And if I counted correctly, we're talking about 36 different huh. facts or different issues that uh, my heritage is checking for you. Okay. You have a different number on the panel, Jeff? Oh, we've got some guesses of 20 or 80 or. Uh, but no, but no, people no. are re people are reporting uh, how how many we they have. Uh, we've got 614. Uh, Deborah has 55. Uh, I'm not talking about how many mistakes. I'm talking about how many uh, cases. Yeah. Uh, so um, I can scroll down and I can see all the different cases and and let's talk a little bit about the multiple marriage of same couple. Uh, and yes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, Elizabeth, um, oh, what's her name? The famous actress, uh, hmm. uh, Elizabeth, come on, Jeff, help me here. Oh, well, uh, uh, she Taylor. married a couple Le of times, Elizabeth actually Taylor? the same guy. Yeah, everyone uh, in the audience is writing in Taylor here. Exactly. Elizabeth Taylor, thank you very much. I love the audience. Uh, so, yeah, she married two times the same guy after she divorced her once. So this is not necessarily a mistake in my family tree. So I can go to the upper right corner right here and select uh, the X will appear right away. And I can simply ignore this issue and will not be prompt again. Uh, now, some mistakes, as for example, a married name enter as a maiden name, also the suffix and the prefix uh, cases uh, that we talked about in advance, are very easy to fix right from this report. I only need to put the mouse on top of that uh, case, and uh, a green suggestion will appear, and uh, by clicking on it, I will be able either to move the name or the suffix or the place or, or just fix whatever problem uh, we have. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move a little bit faster here because we are in the last part, which is the print uh, charts and books. And again, I'm not a fan of printing uh, for various reasons, uh, mostly, you know, the environment, uh, all these papers uh, that we use in order to print, but sometimes you need to print. You need to pass this uh, to other people that don't like or don't have a computer or you don't simply don't want them to access uh, your website or you're going to an event of a family event and you wanna bring it with you on paper. The other reason why I don't like to print so much is because the minute you print this chart, Somebody's going to die, somebody's going to have a new baby, somebody's going to marry it, and then the child is not up to date anymore. 
But nevertheless, my heritage has a few suggestions uh, or options for you to print a, a chart. So you can do like a bow tie, a close family, either vertical or horizontal. You can do your ancestors, your descendants. Uh, I like very much the hourglass because then I can see both ancestors and descendants from uh, a couple. And the sun chart, which is exclusive to my heritage and one of the latest uh, additions, is actually the chart that allows you to put more descendants with all their information in one chart. It's very similar, as you can see on the screen, to a fan chart, but it's, uh, it's 360, it's the whole circle. And one last that you should be very careful with it, which is the all-in-one. Definitely, if your family tree is more than 500 people, I will be very careful before I do an all-in-one uh, chart because it's going to be huge. It's actually going to plot every person in your tree with the uh, connection to everybody else. Now, if I keep scrolling this page down, I will have a series of styles that I can, uh, that I can select. And then also I could select the name of the person or, or the main person for this chart and the title, the individuals and the number of facts that I want to, uh, to sh show on the family tree. Now I'm going to skip the next uh, few slides uh, because of the time, but I just want to mention here like why those charts are actually a tool to check your genealogy. Once, once you have all this printed in a piece of paper and you put uh, or you request like uh, all the information to appear over there, the, the complete uh, dates and places, it's easier just to go over all of them, make sure that all the connections are correct. Those charts are going to show you more individuals uh, in, in, in one shot than what the, uh, the monitor or the website uh, can do. And I will suggest you just to do a single page or multi-page and save them as a PDF. Let me show you one more step what's going to happen is that it's going to take a few minutes uh, for this chart to uh, generate. You can just go and do whatever you want uh, later on. You will receive an, a mail to your direct email address notifying you that the tree is, uh, the chart has been created and you can actually download uh, the chart as a PDF uh, you can delete it, you can order also as a poster, uh, but normally again what I do is I download it as a chart and, and I start browsing all the names, all the dates, making sure uh, that everything is complete, that I have all the information. Uh, so Jeff, uh, I'm, I'm just going to go very fast uh, and just show people that uh, how I did it up till now, it's in the default, uh, but of course you have more advanced customizations. Uh, you can decide exactly how and what uh, can appear on your family tree. Uh, for example, the different facts. Uh, you could mark all the facts and, and the chart is going to look a little bit ugly, but still you will be able to go over all of them. Uh, pictures or no pictures, titles, uh, decoration, uh, that will be a little bit more relevant if you would like to just use this uh, to showcase your family tree and to share with other family members. Uh, finally, uh, there's one more option that we give you, which is the family book. This is also a PDF product. And by the way, all the charts and all the books are completely free. You can do an unlimited amount of, uh, of charts uh, and download them to your computer with no problem. So the family book, which actually be kind of a report uh, of your whole family, you will see also there your notes, you will see biographies and all kind of information. You could decide also what uh, facts appear over there. You can check your sources, your, your places, all the information in your tree, again, 
this is one very neat tool to uh, check and make sure everything is done correctly. Uh, so those are my uh, four tools, uh, preferred tools to make sure your tree is accurate. Uh, I would like personally to thank you everybody uh, for being here today uh, and just uh, stayed on because uh, we have wonderful things uh, both uh, right now, right Jeff? Uh, I think you have uh, some news and some prices and my heritage also is going to be releasing uh, a lot of new features very soon. We're very excited uh, if you are going to be in Rootstech, uh, the biggest uh, conference, genealogy conference in the U.S. I know you're going to be, Jeff. Oh, yeah, that's uh, just coming up. We look forward uh, to see all of you there. We're going to have a beautiful stand. And, and Friday, actually, is the My Heritage Day. Uh, so a lot of surprises and a lot of new features are going to be shown yeah, Roots Tech is always that conference where the big announcements come out. So, yeah, I'm real anxious to find out what's coming. Also anxious for our very first foreign language uh, webinar, uh, Daniel. This is happening, uh, the very first one is happening tomorrow. Uh, Mañana, si señor. Oh, oh, good. So tell us a little bit about tomorrow. I don't even know what this means here in Spanish on the screen, but... Uh, we're going to be doing this and other languages throughout the year. Tell us a little bit about that. Listen, uh, I really cannot explain all the excitement that, that we're living <laughs> these days. Uh, yeah. This was a vision, I know, yours and ours for many time, yeah. uh, to include languages, different languages, uh, webinars in different languages. Uh, and this one is going to talk about the relationship between individuals. And we, we have a professional genealogist from Chile, uh, doing this uh, wonderful presentation uh, tomorrow, uh, same time as uh, today. And we're going to have our country manager, Sonia, also managing this webinar in Spanish. And so it's the second Wednesday of every month at 2 p.m. Eastern U.S. time when we will have uh, one of these foreign language ones. So uh, you here in the audience today, uh, perhaps uh, you're English speaking, but if you know someone else uh, that that would benefit from these other languages, let them know. Uh, the, the, the live webinars will continue to be free as they always have been. So uh, looking forward to that. Also, uh, you, you might want to look later on today, possibly tomorrow morning, we're going to be adding... Uh, the rest of the year online there, as well as uh, the rest of the My Heritage specific uh, webinars uh, for uh, through I think June. So we'll have those on uh, either today or early tomorrow morning. So do check for that. Now uh, we have uh, door prize time. So this is always a real fun part of our webinars. Daniel, our, our first door prize will be a one-year My Heritage complete plan. Uh, do I have everything there on the screen that it includes? Is there anything else you could tell us about uh, what a complete plan is? Well, yes, definitely. Uh, with a complete plan, you have everything that you need. You have uh, both the unlimited size for your family tree. You have uh, the ability to confirm and uh, smart matches to contact other uh, administrators or other users of MyHeritage. You will have also the data subscription, which allows you to go into the record matches or see all the uh, 9.5 uh, billion of records uh, that we have. So definitely, yes, whoever wins it, uh, it has all what he needs uh, to move their genealogy forward. Okay. I like that 9.5 billion records. I just read just a few minutes ago, Daniel, the announcement of the – of the new collections that were just recently added and you've now added the 1940 Denmark census and I'm real happy about that so uh, that that was fun to read well let's go to uh, Don Scholl Don congratulations you're our winner of our one year my heritage complete plan so just watch for your email from us and uh, we'll get that on its way and then let's go to a my heritage DNA test kit uh, Daniel anything uh, you want to Tell us about the, the DNA test kit. Well, I don't think that today we need to talk about a DNA test, right? Everybody knows what a DNA test is. Yeah. Uh, I heard that millions and millions of people around the world are, are doing it. 
uh, and my heritage also offers that. Uh, we're going to improve. We're going to uh, release again a good news for everybody relate, uh, related to the DNA. Uh, but if you already have a DNA test from another company, also the good news is that you could upload your uh, information, your digital file uh, into MyHeritage and, and you will be paying a minimal amount in order to get all the benefits uh, of this uh, feature. Okay. Well, uh, so, so let's see who is who is the winner. Our big winner here today, drum roll sound, uh, is going to Wayne Morgan. Wayne, congrats. I hope you're jumping up and down in your chair right, or on your couch or in your bed. <laughs> Love these webinars. You can do them from wherever you are. Okay, uh, Wayne, uh, congratulations. But, but you know what? Uh, it, no, I understand that we only have two prices. Uh, but I would like to bring, uh, Jeff, the attention to my very good friend, Thomas McKinty. Uh, he actually is running this week uh, with a special of 50% on that complete package. And whoever wants it, I think it's go, it's run until, yeah, you have it over there, Saturday, February 16. Uh, so, yes, take advantage of, of that discount. Go to his uh, website, uh, genealogybargains.com, and, and you will be able to also get the complete package for 50% of uh, its uh, advertised uh, price. Uh, and something I just remember from the records collection, uh, remember that right now for Valentine's Day, we are offering free access to those paid collections related marriage uh, and all related to the Valentines. Uh, so take uh, advantage of all that. You have 50% in a year complete package and you have free records. Okay, and that's uh, and so Thomas McKenty, he's all of our friend. We really like Thomas. Uh, so that's up at his website. And I put that link in your chat area, everyone. So that's good through this coming Saturday. Uh, okay, and yeah, we've got a few questions out there. Yeah, it is. This is for new subscribers only. This uh, specific uh, discount. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Well, we do have. Yeah, Maria is writing in. Yep, she loves Thomas McKenty too. Okay, uh, question time. Well, Daniel, we've got some good questions in here. Uh, if you want me to switch over to your monitor, let me know. I can show answers by walking through in my own personal tree here if you want. Uh, you just let me know. Um, a question here from Wayne. Wayne's wondering, so talking about the discoveries, um, particularly the, the record matches, is there a way to filter that list uh, in, in various ways? Wayne's wondering, can I filter it just to show me primary sources, or can I filter it just to show me certain kinds of sources in that list of record hints? Well, uh, the record matches will show you actually... Um, it's not primary sources uh, only because depending on the record, uh, if, if it's a, a death certificate or if it's a census, uh, it's, it's not necessarily, or, or a newspaper, it's not considered um, a, a primary source. Uh, but yes, uh, you, you can filter between uh, those that you have tending to confirm those are new or those that you have confirmed or even rejected. You may have been rejecting a match uh, just because you thought it was not correct, but with uh, more research, you find out that this is really your relative and the, and the record is, is true. Uh, but no, like you should go by collection. You could sort this by the number of matches, exactly. Uh, and I will suggest everybody just to start from the bottom to the top it's kind of difficult to go over 2031 matches uh, that you have oh, okay. but if you go to the five seven exactly when the minnesota marriages jeff you have only one match it will be very easy just to go over it analyze make sure that this is really uh your guy and in this case uh, you're gaining a, a mi middle name huh. for this uh, joseph j interesting yeah. and the wife uh, is is iona j but you already know that that's because she, her name is gladys but what's this name right here this must be a 
Schlosser, another name that's that I her didn't have. maiden name. Yeah. Yes. Or, or another married Iowa name, perhaps. Jews. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So this, I, I this wonder, is a uh, Jeff wonder, doing this Jeff, life, and and this is kind of more of a personal, uh, your personal genealogy. Uh-huh. Why you have Ju- Jude over there? I do know that Schlosser may be a Jewish name, and probably somebody passed the information incorrectly that she was Jewish, and they just put Jude over there. That oh. will be for you to huh. check later on. Well, I'm I'm just I mean this is uh, like watching Jeff live right now because I I haven't seen this. I, what I'm thinking, Daniel, is I wonder if if Jud or Jude would be her, a maiden name. Schlosser might be a, another married name, and this wool book might be a, like her a second marriage for her. Um, but but regardless, I'm, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure that the Schlosser is her maiden name. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Mhm. You see, you even have record detective over there. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Good uh, question. Yeah. <laughs> we, we could just look at genealogy. Can be distracting. <laughs> oh yes. Okay. So uh, Jean is wondering. Uh, so on these matches, if we don't agree with with it, so she says, what if we don't agree with all of it? If so, if there's some of it that's good and some of it that's maybe not good, what would you do with that? Uh, well, uh, in this case, you will not see it on your screen. But uh, if you go back to a collection where you have uh, more records. Uh, there should be a way, or at least there was a way, um, to uh, ignore all those matches. Uh, let's go, yeah, to, the, to that collection, and let me guide you. Um, hmm. Okay, I don't see it here, uh, but you see the X uh, next to each one? Yeah, you will need to start clicking on each of those and, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm pretty sure we will not show you like 20 records that are wrong oh yeah for I, one yeah collection. I, I, so. I agree I'm just going down the bottom see if there's something else down there 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 was something here Daniel that I like I really like this on the sort uh, I like to sort that by relation meaning what's gonna what's going to show up here at the top are the closest people so here's my great great grandfather mm-hmm. and instead of my I don't know, my ninth cousin or something, but you know, these names are a little more familiar to me, so I might start. I like to sort it by relation and then just work my way down yeah. that way. So, and, and I'm researching here on my side, and, and I remembered and found that the ignore, uh, the whole bunch of, of matches is applied to the smart matches. Ah, okay. And then you can just simply ignore one tree, uh, which okay. is the source of, of the match. And, and not needing to deal with all that, uh, with all those matches. Yeah. Most of the times I do that when, you know, a cousin of mine decided to go into my heritage and start building the tree with all the information that he asked for me. And then I have 300 matches that are obviously my people. So I simply just ignore his tree and move on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks. Let's go. Yeah, lots of other good questions coming in. Christine says, I have a tree up at my heritage. She says most of her research is conducted offline. What's the best way to have her tree online updated? Can she import her current tree to her PC software? Um, I, tell us, I guess, tell us about the Family Tree Builder software. Uh, similar to like uh, my legacy family tree software. Yeah, Family Tree Builder will synchronize with an online MyHeritage tree. Is that right? Yes, that's perfectly right. Uh, It's free and and you can use it or uh, use a different software like legacy, as you said. Uh, And you could upload JetComs to MyHeritage. It's much easier actually when you use the Family Tree Builder because then it's just yeah. one click and everything goes and, and keeps updated. Uh, and whenever, if you or somebody else do does a change on the website, when the next time you open your software, the, the Family Tree Builder, it will synchronize and bring those uh, to the desktop as well. Also, it's, it's a good uh, philosophy uh, to use softwares uh, because it's a copy, it's a backup, an extra backup that uh, you have for your tree. 
But the real reason and the real answer to the question is why uh, you want to have your family tree online. Well, first of all, it's much easier to share it with other family members. You can even invite them and see uh, without touching if you don't like. Uh, see whatever uh, you have uh, done. Till now, you can assign specific individuals to co-administrate that uh, family tree with you, and it's much easier to update the information. But lately, one of the best reasons I have found to uh, put a family tree online is when you have a DNA test, uh, because that will give all the DNA tools the power to find out uh, if your match is really your match and how you are related and, and the people you may have in common um, and, and I'm allowed to say the title because that's not a secret anymore. Actually, Gilad already announced it. Uh, the family, the theory of family relativity. Uh, I have to admit, again, I said it before already, we're very excited. I already saw that in action and it's only happening because people are building their family trees online as well. Going back to the uh, case of a backup, if something happens to your computer, and believe me, things happen, uh, it, your tree on the cloud will be a backup and, and you will be able to download and retrieve it from the website at any time. Okay, uh, thank you. Maria is wondering about the Family Tree Builder. Where, where would she go to uh, well, if you it. go to myheritage.com and then very easy after the slash, you type FTB uh, for Family Tree Builder. That is probably the most, uh, uh, you're missing a, a, a slash over there. There we go. Uh, that's the fastest way to get to the Family Tree Builder page and you can learn more about, uh, about it and how to download, how to install and synchronize with your uh, online tree with no problem. Okay. I even talked a little bit about about it Daniel at uh, in Oslo. Um, let me let me go like this. I'm going to go Oh, I've got a lot of them up there, don't I? Let me scroll now, down to let my... me let me give one one yeah, word of, uh, of caution here while you look for that because I'm already seeing also on the on the questions uh, coming up a Every time you import a JETCOM uh, into MyHeritage, MyHeritage will treat it as a new tree. So if you're building your tree and, and your niece, which is actually the question, is uh, building her tree and then she gave it to you and you imported or you gave her yours to her, uh, you will have two trees. And, and that is one feature that MyHeritage does not have. MyHeritage does not allow you or, or have a feature where you can merge two trees, two different trees or two similar trees into one tree. So make sure uh, that you keep your trees uh, organized. Uh, also, when you import a tree, as I said, it's a new tree, all the matches are going to run from scratch. So whatever you have accepted and copied, you will get notifications or ignore, you will get notifications about all of that again. Okay, thank you. Uh, or a comment up here from Celia. She's she looked at her tree consistency checker for her 8,900 people. She said that it found 1,448 issues. Some will be easy to ignore or fix. Uh, and she says I'll work on this this afternoon because it's snowing again where she's at. So uh, this Celia, is the perfect weather to do genealogy. Oh, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Patrivia is wondering the charts that you were showing us. So that was found. Oh, Under I gotta go family back tree here. One, two, charts. Three, yes. I uh, just want to, here we go. So family tree, ah. go down to more, go down to print charts and books. She's wondering what are the costs for these or is it included? Oh, in I said it already, but we'll be more than happy to say it again. Free, just as you like it. Okay. And you can do as many as you want, and you can download as PDF with no chart. My two favorites, Daniel. I love the sun chart. I mean, that's a unique one that 
that you don't find anywhere else. So that's a great one. I love this all-in-one uh, chart. Yeah, as long as you don't have 10,000 people there. But still, uh, someone here in the audience commented that if they're going to a reunion or something and they just want an easier way to uh, help cousins see how they fit you know, with each other, this all-in-one chart would... would uh, be a nice tool. Yeah. Some, some people really don't see the relationship. So yeah, you can print it. You can actually take that PDF into a printing store uh, in the States. I know plenty of them in every corner yeah. and they will print it really poster size. Okay. So, so yes. Yeah. I've got one hanging up here on my wall, uh, on my left wall here, right next to me. I, it, I like them. They're, they're nice conversation pieces. So, uh, uh, okay, so while we're here in charts and books, Chris is wondering, how do I tell my heritage which of my trees to use? So I think Chris must have more than one uh, tree. Uh, is there a yeah, way for... that's perfectly fine. Okay. Is there a way... Uh, so you go down to the third section of, of this page, and, and you simply select the person that uh, that you want. In this case, the main, per main person is you. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, but if you start uh, typing, uh, let's say, your last name, you will be, see everybody over there. And clearly, Jeff, you have only one tree because if you would have more than one tree, you will actually see where it says, for example, second cousin or cousin. Yeah. You will see one extra line oh, really? saying the name of the tree. Oh, okay. So you're actually not picking the tree. You're huh. picking the individual in a tree huh. and then we will take care of, of taking all the individuals there. okay well so there you go chris and uh but treva i hope that is helpful can you print names in various languages like hebrew polish german this is a question from naomi that's uh, definitely my heritage support uh, 42 languages uh, and it doesn't matter in which one of those you are building your tree you will be able to uh, print and and to do your genealogy uh, in any of those with no problem. Is that just a matter of you entering the information in that language, or is there anything unique that you have to do? No, it's it's normally the language uh, that you use to start to like first to navigate uh, on the tree and then to start keying the information. Uh, which in my case, for example, I keep my uh, family tree in English uh, mainly, but when my family here in Israel browse the website, they will see everything in Hebrew besides the tree. The information about the individuals hmm. are, is going to appear in English. Hmm. Uh, but if okay. I would go into my cousin's tree, which he builds in Hebrew, I will see the names of those people in Hebrew, Russian, Greek, Chinese, whatever language you use. Okay. Uh, thanks. Let's go to Mary's question. She asks, uh, first of all, she says, this was a very helpful webinar, but she says, I'm new to my heritage and I've uploaded my GEDCOM of another tree. What else would be an up to date getting started tutorial uh, for learning my heritage? Is there, is there something out there that will? That'll hold her by the hand and, and walk her through. Well, I would definitely suggest her to browse the, the webinars that we have done huh. in the past. Uh, they're all available in Legacy for free. Uh, I think if, if you, yes, if you do familytreewebinars.com slash uh, myheritage, or actually on the, on the homepage, you also have uh, a nice logo of myheritage oh, right. on, on the border part. Uh, you will see over there all the webinars that we have done. Uh, there is also an FAQ section uh, on the website that will guide her with typing just whatever questions she has right over there on their help, the help center. Okay. Exactly. Uh, you click over there and, and you see all the different uh, categories or subjects and you simply start typing the question and, and you will get the answer. <laughs> oh, no uh, results. No. Okay. You see, no results. Not really. <laughs> okay, so I, had, I couldn't resist. I'm sorry about that. 
Uh, Daniel, a question about the consistency checker. This is from Michael. Is it checking yeah. only preferred facts, or is it checking all of the facts that you have defined? Every fact that you have in your tree will be checked. And, and, okay. it, if, it, and if it has any of those 36 um, cases, let's call it like that, then you will be alerted about it. Okay. Is there, I'm just curious, is there any symbol out here that would warn me that a person has a, a potential consistency issue? Uh, no, actually no. And, oh. and that probably would be a good thing, although I think we are already too Yeah, where would you crowded. put it? Yeah. Both yeah, the, we, the... we have smart matches, record matches, DNA, yeah. Yeah. Besides, I might not want to see that I've got red X's on every person in my mm -hmm. tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you need to think twice. Yeah. Uh, talking about the pedigree maps now, Cassandra's wondering if you're... So let's go there. Uh, pedigree map. You said, Daniel, yeah. I think that you we can make annotations like into the notes or the description for a place. Uh, Cassandra's wondering if you do a search, so if I'm searching here, will mm -hmm. it search those notes or those description fields for uh, those no. annotations? No. Okay. No. That's why uh, I, I, I do it on, on this way and I recommend people to do it in this way is I use the current place. Uh, as the regular place, and then the the old name as uh, as the notation. Uh, and yes, you will not have an easy way to find those places or those old name places uh, in your tree. Okay. But at least they will be saved. All right. Uh, now I'm curious. What are your two locations uh, not found on the map? Oh, uh, let's do it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, some abbreviations in uh, Denmark, it looks like. In Horn, mm -hmm. in Alberg. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Okay, so yeah, don't use abbreviations. You need to put... Oh, I know. Uh, and that's an, another question a lot of people ask me. Like, how do you type and write the places? Uh, normally, I follow the very old and good rule. Like, if if I would be writing a letter you you remember those days uh you had to put the name of the person and then the number uh of the apartment or the street uh, and then the street name yeah. the city uh the um uh, how you say the, the uh, zip code this this or yeah what well, more like the uh ah before the state you have like uh, like an area yeah the, um, the city county you have the oh, county okay. you have the state and then you have the country. Uh, so that's that's how I, I suggest people just to write it down. Yeah, don't don't. Uh, I I think maybe long time ago when when software didn't have a lot of space for us to type stuff, maybe that's where these abbreviations like mm -hmm. this abbreviation may have originated from. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I I like this heat map, Daniel. I think it's it's fun to. Click that, and and there's some other filters. See where fun. most of your families are located, or, or yeah. we're wandering. Yeah, I like I like playing around with this up here too, and just kind of watch how they mm -hmm. migrate around. Oh, all kinds of ways I can use my time here. I I see Doris is asking about the numbers on the map, and the numbers are the amount of events that you have in that particular place. Like you have 31 in Sweden, uh, but if you click there, so you have 13 uh, in Norby and, f okay, and yeah, and four in Tama and, and actually three in, in Sweden per se. <clears throat> and then I click on, see, I click there. Mm -hmm. and, and you see the, yeah, the see four events here. on the side. Yeah. I've got some symbols over here, like you mentioned, and so I've got some things I can 
work on. Everybody have symbols. We just need a little bit of time yeah. to uh, dedicate yeah. and, and to go over all those details and yeah. make sure that they are as perfect as you can. Yep. So Cassandra's wondering, these maps that we have here, can they be exported or, or saved to Google Maps or Google Earth or, or even printed? <clears throat> well, yeah, you can you can print them uh, with the printer icon on the corner, uh, and that will generate a, a map of an area with all the events on that area. Um, you cannot oh, export it, and this is something that uh, we have been uh, working on, but oh, really? it's still not developed. Okay. Um, to export and to use, it is actually Google Maps, uh, but you cannot add it to your personal. Google Map uh, account or your Google account. Huh. Okay, well, fun to fun to hear that you're working on that. Yeah, uh, good. we're always working. Always, always working. New things are yeah. on the horizon. I know, and I don't think you ever. I, I know you don't sleep because you were writing to me <laughs> at like one or two in the morning, and I'm thinking, Daniel, you need to go to bed. Um, what do you do in this case? A question from Donna. If you don't know the person's maiden name. Do you and and you're typing that in in your tree? Do you leave it blank or do you add a married name uh, to the female? What uh, what well, recommendations uh, do you have? Like for every every person, every individual in the tree, you will have uh, for women, you will have a space for the maiden and for the marriage name. Uh, so uh, definitely, yeah. If you click on the pencil right there. You will see that her name is Louise, her maiden name is Morgan, and her married name is uh, Crane, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. So if you don't know the maiden name, I will simply leave it blank. Okay. Yeah. Oh, please, 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 don't name people private or unknown. <laughs> you have no idea how many matches I have with <laughs> unknown people. Just because you don't know the fact that doesn't mean that you need to write oh. that you don't know. Just simply yeah. just leave it blank. Yeah, yeah. You're, so you're Unknown. saying don't do that. <clears throat> yeah, or, yeah, or private. Okay. Just, um, well, private mostly happen when people export from a software or other places yeah. uh, that selects, like, I want my export to be privatized. Uh -huh. and, and then all the living individuals are named private uh, but yeah you don't need to do that my heritage uh, takes care of privatization uh, and if I or, or you Jeff would be looking at my tree uh, you will not be able uh, to see leaving individuals if I don't uh, invite you uh, and I'm pretty sure you are about to answer the question of uh, what how how I changed the name on a tree or you're going to the privacy oh, yeah, setting. Oh, yeah, Lois was wondering, how do you keep a one's family tree private? And I was looking for, uh, I think, this page right here. So this is the, mm -hmm. this is where you exactly. can include so, it. So here you, you on, decide right? what is available for everybody. But you know what? Let me give you and all of our audience uh, a very good trick okay. that actually works not only for my heritage but for any other social media. Uh, can you go to family tree and then uh, just copy the URL? Just click there and no, just first. Oh, so I'll click here. Yeah, yeah. Click, and then click my family tree, copy the URL, okay. and just open uh, an incognito uh, browser and paste that address on on that. All right. I'm How do I do that incognito? Here yeah, we go. I'm New incognito window. Mm -hmm. and, and just paste. paste that address and you will be seeing your family tree as if I would me or somebody who is not invited. Oh, so really? you have set you have set your website totally uh private. Wait one second, don't move from there. Okay. Um and and that's why nobody can even see anything else. Now, let's do this a little bit more complicated and you see in the URL uh, that you have uh, a number, right? Yeah. You have uh, S equals, um, oh, and yes, I will need, uh, no, I cannot show you uh, my tree. Okay. Oh, one second. Um, yes, um, 
hmm, probably will not work. Let's, let's try this. One, seven, six, one, one, five, oh, one. Okay. Although I'm not totally sure that that is my site ID. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, it is. It is. And you see, yeah, my site is also privatized. Huh. So, no, I thought uh, that if uh, you could go uh, to the to the URL, specific URL to the tree, you will see. You know what? Uh, you want to give me the uh, yeah. presentation? This is fun. Something I totally did it. not know. Yeah. So everyone, what I mean, Daniel is showing was showing us there is uh, based on my privacy settings, how is it going to look to someone else when they try to come to my tree? And so that's what I just saw, if I understand that correctly. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what I'm showing. And as you can okay. see here, uh, I'm not even logged in in my heritage. Okay, my heritage is telling me that I'm not a member. And by any way, let's say I got this email, this address yeah. of my tree. Yeah. And you can see this would be me, my wife, uh, my father and my mother, you can see that all living individuals are, are totally privatized by default. Huh. Uh, the death individuals are, of course, uh, available. So I can see the details and we can do the the matches. Huh. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, no need very to, interesting. to get concerned on that. Yeah. Oh, thanks so much. Um, Mary's wondering, what is an incognito browser? Mm, so, okay, good. Yeah, that, so that's you're just opening up a browser that where it's not, I don't know, it it it, it, it doesn't really recognize you, your cookies, uh, your previous logins. Like if if you will open a tab uh, on the uh, on the Facebook, probably you go straight to your Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, but if you open it incognito, uh, you will not know. Huh. The, the browser will not know who are you. Ha, I and didn't know that. Account. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You see, I told you I was going to teach you something. Well, I'm good. Gl I'm glad I came here today, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't, yeah, I thought it. I thought it. Uh, I I didn't know about that part of it. Oh, cool. Well, I'm a smarter person today. Um, good. Uh, <laughs> oh, there. So there must have been a question in here about how do you go and how you change the name of your tree daniel did you see something oh, like that in there yes i saw a question like that um so if you go back uh to uh manage trees where you were before okay uh right now you have edit tree settings uh in view yes so if you click there uh you should be able one second one second one second um hmm Mm, one second, go back. Probably I missed it. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't know. Mm, wait, wait, wait. One second. It was there. Uh, go to go to go to edit tree settings, uh, and then uh, where did you click privacy settings page? No, but that is uh, for the private. For the page huh. uh yeah and then access or content no see now we're playing I try to stump there is Daniel. a way um wait site account no that's that's your site exactly my preferences general will allow you to change the name of the website <clears throat> if i'm not mistaken you know it has been so long yeah. Exactly. This is the name of the website, not the name of the tree. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I'm pretty sure there is a way. If, if Maybe you go to the... Well, FQs. at the very least here, we're we're learning about ways to customize your our site here. So, good. And, and Vicky is also asking, how do you go to the incognito browser? Uh, I don't realize how you went... Uh, I must but have I know that here. if you do a right click over the icon of the browser on the bottom of, of a Windows computer, at least, you will be able to choose open uh, in, in incognito. But you are showing oh, yeah, me now right okay. exactly. Uh, yeah, but you are showing great. me another way. So teach me, please. Oh, I know if you if there's ever a link. So if I want to open this 
uh, the calendar in an uh, incognito. I just right click and click on open link in incognito window and and uh, yeah. Yeah, there you have it. Okay. And de yeah, I'm in I'm in Chrome. Uh, Lois says that it's called New Private Window using Firefox. Yeah, it's pro it's in other browsers too, Doris. Um, and on a Mac, I it's likely there too. Well, uh, well, yeah. Daniel, now and we're Deb, and Deb is is pointing out that we're using Chrome browser, but this could be used in any other uh, browser. Louis is saying that uh, in Firefox is called the private window. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what would be fun sometime, Daniel, is for you and me to just be online in a webinar and just <laughs> just, te just teach each other all the cool things that, that we know and see if we can uh, teach the other guy something new. <laughs> that would <Yeah>. be fun. <laughs> yeah, just let people to ask uh, questions. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, this has been real enjoyable. So I, I've learned things. The audience has learned things. Uh, Daniel, you've, you've done a really nice job in teaching us about these uh, these four topics here today. Uh, before we say goodbye to each other and to everyone else, uh, any any final thoughts you'd like to uh, leave us with? Well, I can only uh, expect everybody, uh, although I know it's not real, but I would love to see everybody both at Rootstech, uh, NGS, FGS, Jamboree, and of course, in Amsterdam, in our own conference uh, in September. Yeah. Uh, but mainly, uh, I wish uh, that everybody can grow their trees and find their relatives uh, either through regular genealogy or or DNA. You know, today every every resource and, and every tool is valid in order uh, to find our relatives and, and our history, and and just try to do good. Okay. Well, thanks, Daniel. And thanks to all of the rest of you, wherever and whenever you are around the world, for sharing part of your day with us. Remember, life is short. Do genealogy first. Bye, everyone. Bye, Daniel. Bye-bye.